Hi friends, I'm Beth Tessier with Beauty by Beth and welcome back to part four of my going gray journey. I get asked a lot about my thoughts after the fact. So now that I am four years after the initial pixie cut transition of having that demarcation line, all of that, I get asked a lot, what do you think now? Have you had any negative or hateful comments from people? If you have, how do you deal with them? How do you feel about yourself in general? So those are such great questions because it's really crazy how this whole going gray thing and growing out our natural hair color is emotional. I've had a few people that don't really understand that ask me like, why is it so emotional? And I have some thoughts about that. So my feelings are this. So I've been dealing with this again for four years. This is not a new thing for me. Our culture has cultivated the normal thing is for women to dye their hair. And then when women are old, they are gray. So that's what our culture perpetuates, right? The truth is young women go gray, but we don't know that. And we don't realize that that is normal because our culture teaches us that young women have dark hair and old women have gray hair. So those of us who have decided to embrace our natural gray hair color are kind of pioneers in this whole um, anti-cultural movement. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because I'm not trying to be a part of a movement. I just was tired of dyeing my hair and I really wanted to just get, I, I just wanted to stop. I wanted to stop dyeing my hair. I wasn't trying to create any kind of movement or be just this revolutionary woman. I just wanted to have some options and I discovered that, that we have options, we can. So I understand that our culture says gray hair equals elderly. So there's definitely always going to be that stigma with gray hair. As far as negative comments, I have been very blessed in the fact that I've only had two negative comments to my face that I can remember. I've known so many girls who have said, man, um, the comments that are coming from friends and family are just so rude. And that's really unfortunate. And if that has been your reality, I really am very sorry. I'm very blessed with a lot of support. And if people did have negative things that they were thinking, they at least kept them to themselves, which is really good. Um, so if you're watching this and you are not a person who has gone gray, but you are trying to be supportive of someone who has gone gray, just keep your opinions to yourself. Um, be encouraging and supportive of someone else's decision. And that will go a long way in building trust and building um, that relationship between the two of you. Do I regret it? I have people ask me this a lot. Do I regret going gray now that I'm on the other side of this? Absolutely not. I cannot tell you how freeing it is to never have to think about dyeing my hair. It feels so good. And I also do, from my own hair, I like the fact that I have um, streaks that are lighter, streaks that are darker, so it kind of looks like a natural highlight situation going on, but I don't regret it even a smidge. Now I will have people say, do you miss your dark hair? I miss my natural dark hair. I don't miss my dyed dark hair. So when I look back at pictures, my dyed hair, it just never, it just always looked a little harsh on me. I love, I loved my natural dark hair. My natural dark hair was really shiny and very dark, almost black. It was really nice. And then the dyed dark, I just could never get it to be what I wanted, what I thought would look really nice. It always looked fine. It's not like at the time I thought, wow, I look really terrible, but it wasn't, it's not my favorite when I look back at pictures. I definitely um, loved my natural hair, not so much my dyed hair. I think it's really important for us to just make decisions that are best for us 
So a decision that is good for me may not be a good decision for you. I have a lot of friends who dye their hair and it is great. I wholly support you. You do you. It's really important for you to be able to know you have the freedom to do whatever you want. And if you are a non-gray person, just encourage and support those around you who have who have made the decision to go natural and embrace their gray. Those types of things are so important in helping friendships and relationships grow stronger. Going gray can be a very emotional decision. And I think the reason behind that emotion is because of what our culture perpetuates. If you're gray, you're getting old. There is nothing wrong with getting old. Being old, being an elderly person is a gift. It means that you have lived a full life. So I'm not slamming getting old. Getting old is a beautiful part of living. But when you are 45, like I am, and then people look at you and think, you know, I'm confused because her face looks younger, but her hair is this. That can be kind of hard to process and it's all simply because of the stereotype that our culture puts out there. That, um, I mean, how many commercials have we seen? How many ads have we seen where if you're experiencing this and if you have grays, cover those grays. How, oh, how embarrassing. I mean, I look back at ads like in the 40s and 50s and how horrible they were to women who had any gray hair coming in. They made you feel like you were ugly and unworthy. And now we are learning that that is not the case. In summary, no, I do not regret it, even a little. I am so happy that I decided to embark on this journey four years ago, not only for my own experiences, but the fact that I've been able to meet so many of you via the internet, have conversations, with you, be an encouragement to you, let you know that you are worth investing in, you're worth making a priority, not to be ashamed of your natural hair. And you know, it's been a beautiful endeavor to put my story out there and then get to know so many of you who were feeling the same insecurities, the same uncertainty, and let you know that you have options. So it's been a really, really fun experience for me. Thanks so much for joining me on this four-part series as I broke up my story into little bite-sized pieces for you. Please never hesitate to reach out to me. My contact information um, will be available here with this video, and I would love for you to know that you can reach out if you ever have any questions, if you're feeling insecure or unsure. You have a friend here um, on this platform who understands how you feel, so never hesitate to reach out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.